Thank you very much. Hope everybody enjoyed the, the lunch and the presentations during the lunch and had uh, some good training sessions. I've heard great things about those, uh, about those sessions. So welcome to our opening plenary session. Very excited. Uh, we've got a full packed uh, couple hours here of really fascinating speakers. Very interested in hearing from them and their perspective. Um, we're going to delve into what government and energy providers are doing right here in Michigan and hear how local and regional climate leaders are collaborating with leaders around the globe to address the climate crisis. We will also hear from sustainability leaders from international companies who are working to decarbonize all across their business and supply chains and create a sustainable circular economy. Before we get started, I do have some housekeeping notes for you here. And um, I, I, sorry, but I failed to mention this earlier in the, um, in the, during the luncheon comments, but um, we're also a um, handshake-free zone, if so you desire. And there are many ways that you can greet each other um, if you prefer, prefer to do so. So Bob and I are going to model a couple of those <laughs> right now. So first there's the, um, the, the age-old favorite, the fist bump. There you go there. And then there is the elbow tap. And then Bob has invented a new one, which is called the foot tap. <laughs> so you have a choice of three right there. Um, feel free to avail yourselves to those with your fellow attendees. Um, I also want to spend a few minutes right now saying thank you so much to our wonderful staff at C2ES and the Climate Registry. Um, we couldn't be here without you. Bob and I have a very easy job uh, here. We have the easiest job, and all the staff here is working really hard to make your, uh, make your experience exceptional this week. I also want to thank all of our sponsors, starting with our headline sponsor, America's Pledge, and our host city sponsor, DTE Energy. And thank you also to the hosts of today's workshops and training ses sessions for starting off CLC in such engaging and energizing way. Uh, another thing I want to let some of you know about, if this is the first time you've been attending the Climate Leadership Conference, is about our conference app. And there are uh, a lot of benefits for signing on to the app and using it. You can find out about speakers and sessions and have access to documents that are attached to these sessions. Uh, we'll also be making updates and announcements uh, from the conference organizers to the attendees. And it's also a great way to find out who is in the room, wh what attendees are here, and then if you want to meet with them and uh, set up a time to connect, it's a great way to do that. Uh, we will also be live streaming this session and a number and three other of the plenary sessions. And those are available on our CLC YouTube channel. So you can subscribe to those and you'll see the full sessions afterwards. Uh, also, we'd love to hear your thoughts during and after the Climate Leadership Conference. And uh, so feel free to tag us on social media using hashtag the CLC. With that, I'll turn it back over to Bob. I thought for a second there we were going to try to dance or something. <laughs> but um, it's serious, serious stuff uh, in terms of everybody's individual issues and concerns in terms of con you know, d the different uh, coronavirus uh, issues. So um, sort of be calm and carry on. Um, I want to say what a, I want to echo Amy on what a tremendous um, set of working sessions and training sessions we just had. I, I had a chance to sit in and listen and I'm really, I'm really impressed with the work. But my job right now is a, is a really pleasant one. Um, I'm going to introduce Jerry Norcia, uh, who's the CEO of DTE and you just heard there are our uh, host city sponsor. Um, and under Jerry's leadership, DTE has been setting some very ambitious goals, including net zero carbon emissions 
by 2050, and I'm sure he'll speak to this when he comes up to the podium. But DTE Energy has been part of a, a big part of our ability to have a successful conference here in Detroit. Um, not only are they the host city sponsor, but they've also been a, a fantastic guide to us and to the Climate Registry in connecting us with other uh, institutions and, and players and, and interested parties in the, in the Detroit and Michigan area. And so we're very grateful for the work that they have done to help us have a successful conference. I also have to say one other last thing before I t ask Jerry to come up, and that is uh, DTE itself has been a really uh, a, a wonderful uh, help and, and source of information and advice to the Center for Climate and Energy Solutions as we struggle to help companies think about how they decarbonize and how they become more efficient and deal with technology issues. Uh, DTE has always been there uh, with advice and sa sage advice for us. And now that they're moving out even more aggressively, um, I can only see that increasing. So, Jerry, I hope you can come up and, uh, and then uh, we'll look forward to hearing your comments. Well, thank you, Bob, and uh, good afternoon, everybody, and uh, welcome to Detroit. I hope you're uh, enjoying the city of Detroit. Uh, lots of things to do in Detroit, and hopefully you'll get an opportunity to uh, taste some of the great food uh, in Detroit and maybe experience some of the uh, local entertainment like jazz clubs and, and other uh, many venues that are exciting here in Detroit today. Uh, we're also uh, honored uh, that we are the host city sponsor uh, for the Climate Leadership Conference, uh, the first time in Detroit. How cool is that? So we're really excited about that, and it fits quite nicely uh, with our agenda as a company. Uh, DT's aspiration is not only to be the best operated energy company in North America, but also a force for growth in the communities where we live and serve. And some of the things we're doing to reach that goal of being the best uh, in the world is through our clean energy investments and, and emission reduction efforts. We're the largest uh, investor uh, in Michigan in renewable energy. Uh, to date, we've invested about $3 billion, primarily in wind energy, and now we are starting to pivot uh, towards solar energy. Uh, we've got some of the largest uh, renewable operations uh, east of the Mississippi River, which is something that we're really proud of. In 2017, as Bob mentioned, we put some very aggressive goals out there for carbon reduction. And last year, uh, we announced that uh, we were going to reduce uh, our carbon emissions by 80 percent by 2040. In 2040, we'll retire some of our largest uh, carbon emitting uh, resources. And by 2050, uh, we're looking to be net zero. So very exciting. Uh, we've certainly highly engineered, a uh, company with a lot of engineers, engineered how we're going to get to 80 percent, but we have a lot of work to do to find our way to a net zero position by 2050, and we, we will be working with groups like you uh, to find our way there uh, together. As CEO of DT Energy, I'm proud of these accomplishments, but I think what's more important uh, than the accomplishments themselves is getting people to understand the why behind what we're doing uh, to combat climate change. The transportation sector and power industry are the largest emitters of carbon, and as such, we have a responsibility to lead on this issue. If we don't take decisive action, uh, we don't stand a chance in effectively addressing our carbon reduction goals. It's incumbent on us at DT Energy to lead on this issue. It is a responsibility that we take very seriously, uh, and this issue is not only one that we tend to lead on, but we also intend to win on, and, uh, and I believe that together we, we can do that. And I think it was a genius decision to host this conference in Michigan because there is a cross-section of companies here in this state that are acting on climate change, so you know that consumers' energy Another large utility in the state of Michigan recently announced an ambitious net zero commitment. The auto companies are making substantial investments in electrifying the transport sector, and I'm proud to be an EV owner, and I love my, uh, my plug-in hybrid. I hope that at some point I can buy uh, a local vehicle that's 100 percent electricity. I know there's many of those coming shortly, so that's, uh, I'm excited about uh, that, the advent of that. Whirlpool is another home state company that is going above and beyond in its efforts to make more sustainable, energy-efficient products, and that helps everyone who purchases Whirlpool appliances reap cost savings on their energy bills 
And when you make something more energy efficient, it obviously has less emissions or creates less emissions. Kellogg's, based in Battle Creek, is implementing a sustainable farming innovations aimed at reducing emissions. This is really important because of the pe people often overlook that the agricultural industry in Michigan is a $100 billion industry, so adopting more sustainable farming practices is another way uh, to reduce carbon. So excited about that. I'd also like to call out the outstanding leadership of our elected officials. Climate change is not a siloed issue that can be solved in isolation. It's going to take comprehensive team effort, and leaders such as Governor Gretchen Whitmer, U.S. Senator Debbie Stabenow are helping to propel us in the right direction. Governor Whitmer launched the state's first advisory council for environmental justice and is a huge supporter of the Paris Climate Agreement. Senator Stabenow recently released a report which documents the impact of climate change in Michigan and outlines how the state is poised to lead the way in addressing this challenge. <clears throat> so from our elected officials to our Michigan industries to local environmental groups and foundations, we're working together as a team to tackle this issue. And I think this conference is designed to keep the momentum going for us. When you think about regions of the country where climate advocacy and innovations are taking place, sometimes it's easy to think that uh, Michigan doesn't come to mind first. Uh, but the fact that Amy and Bob have agreed to host this prestigious conference here says a lot about the great work that has taken place in and around uh, the Motor City. And so it's an awesome reflection of Amy and Bob's tireless efforts to broaden and create a more inclusive army of climate advocates. So thank you both for your leadership on this issue. And in closing, when I look around this room, I see so many people with all the same goal uh, to protect the planet for future generations. And I was mentioning to one of my colleagues this afternoon, it's even more especially important to me that uh, my uh, son and daughter-in-law are expecting a baby uh, this week, any day now. So I may get a phone call while I'm up here to go, but uh, it gives me that much more inspiration to really uh, make climate change an imperative uh, for us as we go forward. So next month, we'll celebrate Earth Day, and a DTU will mark the 50th anniversary through significant actions all month long. Uh, we'll commission a new wind energy park here in the state of Michigan, sponsor several large tree planting events across the state, and announce a new infrastructure uh, initiative for EVs. And we're not stopping there. We're fundamentally reshaping the way energy is produced in Michigan, and we are committed to moving the environmental agenda forward nationally. It is my hope that you all leave this event more informed about the climate crisis, but also more inspired to take on tangible actions to combat it. I tell my people all the time, I like goals, but I like accomplishments even more. So I look forward to working with you. Thank you very much, and have a great day.